Number seven, on a mission, and looking to defend their Big 8 conference crown. Here come the Cornhuskers. And hi, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler. Welcome to Stillwater. Tonight, we open up Big 8 play. Oklahoma State's off to a 3 and one start, a rejuvenated program under Pat Jones. As for Nebraska, always a powerful machine. They're off to a perfect 4-0 start. Mike Godfrey, maybe it's the time for Pat and his group to find out how good they really are and for Tom Osborne's troops to find out how good they can be. Well, Brad, you're right. Nebraska had an open date last week, didn't play, so it gave them a chance to get some of their injured players well. Tommy Frazier, the option quarterback for Nebraska, has had a bad ankle. And when you're an option quarterback, you have to cut a lot downfield. Tonight, he'll be 100%. Calvin Jones, a fine tailback, was nicked up a little by injuries. He's 100% tonight. You'll see him on a tailback counter on this play following two 300-pound Nebraska linemen to the left with good running room. They like to run the football. They're averaging 284 yards rushing, leading the Big 8. Oklahoma State on the other side, rushing defense has only allowed 88, point, 88 yards, so something's got to give tonight, Brad. Well, Oklahoma State's going to hang it on that defense because as we keep up with the Joneses, if you will, tonight, Oklahoma State got a precocious quarterback out there. Tony Jones will watch him tonight. Well, Tony Jones is a freshman quarterback. Last year at this time, he was preparing his high school team to play Stillwater High School. He's a strong arm quarterback that can run the option. Statistically, he's thrown 35 passes so far this year. Not an interception yet, but he's going to get a true test tonight. The key for Oklahoma State is first down, they have to have success. They've won seven straight on their home turf at Lewis Field. To make it eight in a row, they'll have to pull off a big upset over the number seven team in the land. We'll find out if they can do it when we come back. Television audience. Getting ready for Thursday night activity from Stillwater, Oklahoma. Oklahoma State hosting Nebraska. Let's get the third member of our broadcast crew in here, the good doctor, Jerry Punch. Jer Thank you very much, Bradley, and hello, everyone. You know, all Halloween is already three weeks away, but the faithful here at Oklahoma State and Stillwater are already conjuring up visions of the ghost of defense past. We're talking about back in the 80s when current All-Pro Leslie O'Neill led a Cowboy defense that held the Cornhuskers without a rushing touchdown for two consecutive years. Why the vision? Well, in the first four games of 1993, the Cowboys have not allowed a single rushing touchdown. In fact, they currently lead the Big A in three out of four defensive categories. Their trick tonight will be for Buskis candidate Keith Burns and company to somehow corral a very potent Cornhusker offense. Their treat, if they can pull it off, to preserve a streak where they have not lost a single game on their home turf since November of 1991. And, oh, by the way, they may just receive a national ranking for the first time in five years. Brett? All right, Jerry, that defense will get a look at Nebraska's offense to open the game. Pat Jones, the winningest coach at Oklahoma State. He reached that plateau with a victory last week. And on the other side of the field, looking for win number 200, which puts him in some pretty impressive company as Tom Osborne in his 21st season at Nebraska. A little windy. So Oklahoma State's going to have to hold it for their kicker. The Cowboys won the toss, deferred to the second half. Nebraska set to receive, and we're underway in Stillwater. Very mild, five yards deep, and he won't bring it out. Touch back. Nebraska will work offensively from its own 20-yard line. So the Cornhuskers... Bring it out under Tommy Frazier, their sophomore quarterback, who this time a year ago was just starting to shine for Tom Osborne. And he's added the passing punch to an always tremendous ground attack. First down, Nebraska from the 20. Calvin Jones gets a quick six. Ainsley and Williams let him have it. It'll be second and four. Let's take a look at the McDonald's starting lineup so offensively for Nebraska. You've seen Calvin Jones already. Healthy for the first time since game one. He joins Frazier and Schlesinger. Gerald Armstrong, the tight end, only six catches, three for touchdowns with Dixon and Muhammad. And pick a 300-pounder up front. Zadeska is one of them, a two-time academic All-American as well with Lundberg, Malin, Stye, and Wiegert. And it's second down and four, Nebraska. 
and Jones has a first down as he crossed the 30 near the 31. Defensively for Oklahoma State, up front Jason Gilden, the Cowboys career sack leader with Langford, Green, and Williams. Behind them, Richie Ainsley already in on a tackle. He's their leading tackler, Burns a Butkus candidate, and Harden, the other linebacker. And little Scott Harmon in the secondary, more interceptions than anybody else in the Big 8 in the last two years with Criddle, Werner, and Williams. Brad, Nebraska really has a size advantage in the offensive line against the defensive front of Oklahoma State. And they're just going to try to play smash mouth football against this Oklahoma State defense. Now the smash already hit the mouth of Richie Ainsley, who's been in on two tackles, but he still hasn't gotten up after the last play. There he is. We said he came in as a leading tackler on this club, 40 on the season, and he's up to 42, but right now he's not sure if his number is 40 or 42. So they'll help him off. He's one of the main cogs of that highly ranked defense that Jerry talked about. And that's all Pat Jones needs is for his defense to get banged up. It'll be a first down, Nebraska. Their initial first down of the ball game on two Calvin Jones runs, good for 10 yards plus. Own wide receiver is Mohammed. Frazier appears to change things up at the line on first down. The counter, Jones, great move in the open field. He got five. Hobbs, who just checked in for Ainsley, joins Burns on the tackle. Tailback counter play, you see Tommy Frazier's numbers, 32 completions, 60 attempts for four touchdowns and only one interception. Where he becomes dangerous, Brad, is because they run the ball so effectively, eventually he's going to play action pass and there'll be a receiver wide, running wide open downfield. As Mike said, Tommy Frazier also healthy for the first time since the first play of the opening game. That's when he turned that ankle. Second and five, Nebraska on the option. And here comes Frazier. First down, Cornhuskers. He bounces out to the 44-yard line. Scott Harmon put the stop on it. Well, Brad, you just mentioned that Tommy Frazier's healthy. He's going to run the option to the short side of the field. The guard pulls, the fullback lead block. Tommy Frazier wasn't going to pitch, pitch that ball at all. He was going to carry it the whole way. What a dimension. Frazier, the sophomore out of Bradenton, Florida. That's what he can do on the ground, and that's when he's not even healthy. First down, Nebraska. At its own 44-yard line. Three wide receiver group. Dixon, Ball, and Muhammad. And Frazier drops the ball, looking for the handle. Still loose. Oklahoma State with a chance, and they cover it at the 24. Javon Langford got it. That's the strategy you have to have on defense if you're Oklahoma State. Make them go 80 yards. You figure they'll make a mistake. Tommy Frazier just drops the football. There was not an exchange problem. He just pulled out, dropped the football, and then it gets kicked. Yvonne Langford, number 89, with the recovery. Exactly what Oklahoma State was hoping for, an early turnover to try to help their young offense. And that young offense comes up to the 24-yard line of Nebraska. And there's the freshman, the true freshman, Tony Jones. Going to throw on first down, wide receiver screen. Working his way inside the 20 is Raphael Denison. Oklahoma State offensively. Tony Jones, you've seen his first pass, making his second career start with Spats and Johnson. Shannon Culver, 26 yards a catch. Denson is dangerous, too. We've already seen him and Derek Jones, the tight end. Another true freshman has his work cut out for him. Derek Linen has to try to slow down Trev Alberts, the Butkus nominee for Nebraska, with Greenlee, Hope, Orts, and Butler. Flag on the field, too, Brad. Looks like it's against Oklahoma State. Nebraska's pointing the other way. Personal foul here. Personal foul here. Offsetting will do it again. Andy Frazier getting ready for the next chance. He had it going in the right direction for Nebraska on their opening series before a mishandled snap. And now Oklahoma State 
second down. It's after the play, Brad, so everything stays the same now. Second down for Oklahoma State. And a long three to go. Already inside Nebraska's red zone. Three wide receivers for Charlie Brown. And he's got a first down. It's Mark Spatz. Nebraska, their defense looks like this. Trev Alberts, a Buckus nominee up front. Two sacks guy of the Cornhuskers all-time record with Jones, Raymakers, and Keneally. Mike Anderson didn't start a linebacker tonight. Darren Williams starts for him. Anderson under the weather with Beeler and Stewart. And in the secondary, Toby Wright. Two interceptions. He's taken them both back for touchdowns. Joins Miles, Dumas, and Reese. First down, Oklahoma State. Tony Jones is an option quarterback also, so he's dangerous down here. Gives it off. And a lot's on the play with the tailback, Daryl Johnson. Nice job defensively by Lorenzo Brinkley. It hasn't been many trips inside the 20 of the opposition this year for Oklahoma State, Mike, but they make them count. Nine possessions, six touchdowns, three field goals. And when you have a quarterback like Tony Jones, he can roll out, get on the corner, away from the blitz inside. So it's an advantage to get him outside. Oklahoma State came in plus five, and their turnover ratio is plus six, effective with that fumble recovery. And now try to turn it into points. A loss to two on the play, second and 12. Going off the left side to the nine. Toby Wright from the secondary helped on the tackle. And Nebraska's conscious of the option, too. You're going to see interior line play. The guard, Anthony Greenlee, pulls, gets a good block. Joe Jefferson hits the hole. A pretty good gain. Makes it third and seven now for Oklahoma State. Play comes in from the bench. Shannon Culver brings it in. Let's see if they've called his number. He comes out to the left side. Rafael Denson, wide right. Third down at seven. There's the pass and it's kicked. It was intended for Culver and broken up by Toby Wright. The boy, if he'd have brought that one in, he'd had his third touchdown. A little high for him, but he just was able to get his hand on it to deflect the ball. Oklahoma State with a one-back offense, almost a sure passing situation. You see the hand of Toby Wright deflect the ball. Great play by Wright. Had he not made it, it may have been an OSU touchdown. As it is, they'll try a 26-yard field goal from Lawson Vaughn. He hasn't missed all year, and he still hasn't missed. Oklahoma State doesn't get seven, but they cash in on the turnover. And Pat Jones, Cowboys, with 10.48 left first quarter, up three. ESPN Thursday Night CFA is brought to you by Mercedes-Benz, where safety, reliability, and performance are never optional. And by American Airlines, something special in the air. Nebraska down three with 10.48 to go first quarter. Again, the turnover led to a 15-yard, six-play drive, a little over two minutes for Oklahoma State to get the field goal. Scott Snyder's got it teed up for the second time tonight. Corey Dixon and Byron Miles back deep for Nebraska. This one will go to Dixon at the three. Straight ahead, flag down as he bursts to the 30, but I think they're going to bring this back on an illegal block. They'll back it up inside the 20. And let's go down to Jerry Punt. Doc? Gentlemen, in the previous series, senior middle linebacker Richie Ansley uh, got hit helmet to helmet, came off the field a little bit wobbly and woozy. He sat on the bench. The doctors uh, talked to him a little bit. He has cleared, and he has put the helmet back on and headed back into the ball game. They can ill afford to lose him. He is a very valuable part of this Cowboy defense. Back up there. Played every linebacker position in his day in Stillwater. And he's looking to the sideline to make the call. The call will come out to Nebraska eight-yard line. Jones and Seattle behind Frazier. Calvin Jones got a couple, that's all. 
Bill Miller, the defensive coordinator, Brad, has to be happy about his start because what he wants to do to Nebraska is make them work the length of the field and take time off the clock. Do not give them a big play because you can't give this offense a big play. They'll break it wide open. He was telling us that's against the norm. Normally, you don't want to see 12, 14 play drives from the opposition because you want to make these guys work. Last time it did is they dropped the ball after a couple of first downs. Second and eight. And down he goes. Gilden is there to meet him first. Lankford helped him out. It'll be third down and long, Nebraska. Just a quick option, a down the line option to the short side of the field, but number 89, Yvonne Lankford, plays Tommy Frazier all the way. He took away the option, Brad. He didn't allow him the chance to pitch the ball. Third down and nine, Nebraska. And there's that run defense that Mike talked about in the open, ranked 12th in the country. So far, they haven't given up much to Nebraska. Third and long, motion on the defensive front. Penalty markers. And the whistles are blown. Finally, play is stopped. It looked like Oklahoma State came in on the defensive side unless they were drawn off. Dead ball foul. Ball start. On the and they were. Sometimes when you travel on the road in the Thursday night ball game, this kind of start is what you expect. But watch the Nebraska. I don't see a lot of movement there. Look like to me, number 99, Kelvin Ingram from Oklahoma State may have made the move. May have gotten a gift. What Nebraska has been handed is a third and 14. And if Frazier throws, it'll be from his own end zone. He's going to keep it on the ground. And Jones goes down in his track. It's Langford again. What a series he's had. Defense is only allowed 88 yards a game running the football. So it's a run offense in Nebraska versus a run defense of Oklahoma State. Look at penetration. Number 89, Yvonne Langford just slips inside the block of the Nebraska line. And it'll bring out Byron Bennett to punt from his own end zone. And I mean his back foot's on the back line. Scott Harmon in return formation for the Cowboys. Great punt. Harmon back pedals to the 43. What a kick. And nice coverage by Nebraska as well. But still, after a 53-yard kick, Oklahoma State will have great field position on offense. When we come back, they're up three. 3 nothing Oklahoma State and the ball back in their offense chomping at the bit from its own 46-yard line. Natalie Marker's down before the snap. Greenlee on the left side for Oklahoma State. May have been the man that moved. Dead ball foul. False start on the offense. First foul. You're right, Brad. Anthony Greenlee, number 55, the left guard, just hedges a little bit. Teach your defensive lineman, as soon as there's movement, go over and hit him. I'll tell you what I think did that. They were waiting for the whole time out. They haven't been on TV in five years, man. They wanted to play offense. Finally, they had to wait and wait and got up there. Now it's first and 15. Trying to throw the wide receiver screen left side. Intended for Raphael Denson incomplete. Interesting on Tony Jones. Mike Gundy, the quarterback coach, ran a camp over in Tulsa, and he had Tony Jones in his camp. It was a skilled player's camp, and after the week was over, he offered him a scholarship, and they battled. That's Mike Gundy with the headset on who calls the offensive plays, and we asked him if he, was a, if he considered OU, and he says, I was an OU fan, but I wanted to come to Oklahoma State. Mike Gundy says, after I saw him three days in camp, I was more than willing to offer him a scholarship. They really like the looks of this kid. Off play action, he's in trouble now, but shows his mobility. Incomplete. Thrown intended for Fred Thomas. When you have a freshman quarterback, I'm sure Nebraska's gonna try to heat him up tonight with a lot of blitzes. Dante Jones, number 84, is gonna come from the right side, pressure and beats the tackle, but just forces him out of the pocket. Now, instead of running the football, as being a freshman, he decides to throw the ball, but there's no one there. 
So they'll try to force him into bad decisions all night. Third down, 15. And Nebraska loading up shows blitz. They don't come with it, but they get enough pressure from the group up front. Jones. He completed it. To the 38-yard line to Darrell Boogie Johnson. 21 yards on the pass flow. Everything's gone wrong for Tom Osborne in Nebraska because they really did get pressure on him, but they ran into each other in the backfield. Gave Tony Jones a chance to escape and then throw the ball down the field. A good defensive call by Charlie McBride, but he just didn't execute on Tony Jones. Tony Jones sets up the pass. Watch the pressure. Now watch him collide. The two Nebraska players collide. Dante Jones and Trevor Alberts. What a catch. And a first down. On a third and 15, they pick up 21. Here comes a blitz from the corner. Flag down. Johnson in the open field. And he gallops down to the 11-yard line. Motion. Cowboys erases a 27-yard run. Culver shaking his head. He's the guy that moved early. He's a wide receiver, and he's got an official right beside him. The game's tough enough without having an official right next to you. <laughs> Two feet away, he could have been able to reach out and hold him. Shaking his head. He knows he made a mistake that cost his ball club. So instead of first and 10 at the 11-yard line, it is first and 15 back at the 42. Jones, play action, steps inside the rush. He'll try to get what he can, and boy, he got a whole bunch of Toby Wright. Wright is a big hitter. Coaches like Toby Wright. They say he's a big play guy, and he'll just knock you silly from the secondary. Number three, six foot one, 200 pound safety. Second on Nebraska with 27 tackles this season. That's exactly what they said. He'll knock you silly, and he almost did on Tony Jones. Brings up second and 15. Jones got back to the original line of, not the original line of scrimmage, but that line of scrimmage at the 42. Three wide outs. first down. His given name's Darrell, his nickname's Boogie, and I'm telling you, he's Boogie in so far in the first quarter. Darrell Johnson, number 23, the tailback's going to start in this direction, but where they're having some success is the cutback lane, because Nebraska's overrunning. If you see him cut back, good blocking again by Brian Holt, the center, number 56. Brings up third down in the yard. Darrell Johnson on the season, having a good night so far. Last time they gave it to the fullback in short yardage. Jefferson has it, and he's got a first down to the 25. Terry Keneally cut him off his pins, but not before he got five yards. They have Nebraska on the run, Brad, but they need to get the end zone for a touchdown here. They can't afford another field goal where they get stopped because you know Nebraska's explosive. It's an explosive offense. They're going to uh, get, get going here pretty soon, but they need to punch this in for a touchdown. First down and 10 from the Nebraska. Seventh play of the current drive. Under six minutes, first quarter, 3-0 Cowboys and looking for more at the Cornhusker 25-yard line. Got a couple. Trev Albert hitting low. And there's the kid we talked about, a Butkus candidate, an All-American. Tom Osborne says, I don't know if I've ever had one better than this kid. And they've had some great ones. Number 34, Trev Albert's blocked, first of all, by number 32, Roger Franks comes off the block, 
He's able to make the tackle. Tom Osborne says he has a great first step. They think a better first step than the guys like Roderick Thomas and Neil Smith, and you get on the list. There been some pretty good guys that have played out there, and Trev Albert's another in the long line. I'd say that's a pretty good first step. Yep, that is. Oklahoma State slow getting the play in on this uh, play. We're going to have to hustle down to seven on the clock, and it's second and seven on the field, and they're going to take a timeout. Seven. Down to two seconds on that clock, and wisely, Tony Jones says, I'm going to go over and talk to the coach. We'll talk to you when we come back. But um, the most, uh, the uh, the secondary, that's what I'm worried about because they'll, they'll blitz. And um, I'm worried about the two safeties, actually. You know, so when I come up to the line, I'm going to uh, look for the safeties and not Trevor Alberts. I think my lineman can handle him. So far, they've done a pretty good job. But Tony Jones' mobility has really helped the cause. Second down at seven. Cowboys leading 3-0. 5-0-4 left first quarter. Denson in motion. Jones throws to him in the flat, and he's got a first down. Ernie Beeler made the tackle, but Raphael Denson got it up. Because they've had good field position, they've been able to give Tony Jones some short throws. Here he hits Raphael Denson coming out of the backfield. Number 22, just a short, safe throw. And because they've had good field position, Brad, they've been able to start him off very positively tonight. Remember, we told you every time in the red zone of the opposition this year, OSU has scored. They have added to that tonight in 10 trips inside the 20. It's six touchdowns, four field goals. They're back inside the 15 again. Johnson got a couple. Mike Mitter from the secondary made first contact. Billy Wade helped him out on the tackle. They have not run an option play yet, Oklahoma State, and they really run the same option play that Nebraska runs. They, they took it off the tape of Nebraska, and wouldn't be surprised now if Tony Jones goes to the option. The drive started at the 46, just traveled 40 yards in four minutes. Second down, nine. tight end set for the Cowboys. The fullback, Jefferson. Trev Albers made that play. He made the first contact, and Terry Keneally and company cleaned up. Well, Mike, Mike Gundy talked about Trev Alberts the other day, and he said the quarterbacks were watching tape, and they said he plays hard every play. He tries to make every single tackle, and he gives you a problem on every play. And you see, he beat the block of Anthony Greenlee, number 55, to make that play. Brings up third and long. Eight to go for Oklahoma State with 325 left first quarter. Again, Nebraska thinking about a blitz. Jones on a little option of his own. In a lot of trouble and somehow found enough of a seam to get out of bounds and Trev Alberts comes all the way from the other side to make the tackle. Good sign for Nebraska defensively. Charlie McBride Bruce Moore, number 90, makes the play, but they're able to hold him again, Brad, from getting the touchdown, forcing them into another field goal. Good pursuit by the Nebraska defense. Mike Anderson's into the game, number 48, makes the tackle. Lawson Vaughn has already hit from 26. This one from 29. Perfect on the year until now. Oh, no, we got that one, too. I thought it was going wide left. Vaughn tucked it in there, 6 nothing. Oklahoma State. Those are good when you're at home. <laughs> 3 6 to go first quarter. Oklahoma State with a couple of field goals. Field goal. I thought he missed this thing. Well, it's close. It's, it's close by inches. Lost in Vaughn, number 13. Kicks the football. Now watch how close it is. Stop it right there. It's right over the bar, but at home, they're good. They always give it to them at home. <laughs> it's Lewis Field. It's not Lincoln. Corey Dixon, a yard deep, and he'll bring it out. Nice hit on the special team. And it's Lewis Adams who makes that hit. 42 yards on a scoring drive in 12 plays. And Watson Vaughn, the aforementioned field goal. 
Makes it 6 nothing. Field position's not been good for Nebraska. 20-yard line twice and inside at one time, but now you'd expect their offense to take control. 20, the 8, the 18. And all their plays have mustered four yards against that fired-up Cowboy defense. Jones, boy, it's still tough. Got two. That's all. When you get Nebraska backed up inside their 20-yard line, then you have an advantage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right here. So you had eight defensive players in the box to make it tough for Nebraska to run. Tommy Frazier's either going to have to run the option or throw the football against that eight-man front. Let's see if he throws on second and eight. He's not going to have time. Well, he's bought himself some time. And he shows his mobility. And a penalty marker, we're going to have a personal foul on Link Harden after the play. He just flat ran Tommy Frazier too far out after a 17-yard scramble. What well, was Pat Jones talking about the other day? They knock him into the drain here. At the state. What they call it? A drain what? A drain shot, yeah. Drain shot. They try to knock him into the drain here. Real close to the corner, but... Tommy Frazier makes a bad play into a good play, but you see he's out of bounds now. Link Harden has to let go. There's the pull down out of bounds and the penalty call. Yeah, you just can't have that that far out. And you don't usually like to do that when you're near Nebraska's bench either. That's true. A lot of white jerseys over there. So it's into OSU territory for the first time tonight for Nebraska. Ten runs, they haven't put it up yet. When they throw it off a of play action, I guarantee you somebody be wide open. Henley Marker's down again. Seen a lot of flags here in the first quarter. The thought that comes to mind, Brad, is the open date. Sometimes it can be a, a great thing for your team. Then ball foul. Ball start on the offense. First foul. The plus is it gives you time to heal. But the negative is, like Tom Osborne said last week, they only practice three days. Sometimes you lose your timing and it takes a little while to get it back. Even with the guys getting healthy, they didn't see much of the practice field. And so it backs it up to first and 15. Back in their own territory. 2-19 left first quarter, 6-0 Cowboys. Frazier keeps it, finds himself an opening, and he hustles his way to the 40. Couple yards short of the first down. Charlie Verner made the tackle. But he got 13. Got a key block from Rob Zadeska, number 56. Tommy Frazier on an option play where there really wasn't a tailback coming around. You see Zadeska, number 56. 6'5, 300 pounds. They have four 300 pound linemen. Cowboys haven't given up a touchdown in the first quarter all year. They're a minute and 40 seconds away from being able to continue that boast. But they've got the top rushing unit year in and year out in the country looking at them. And Frazier finally goes to the air, and Muhammad's got a first down at the 30. Frazier hits Muhammad. How many times do we hear that in the 70s? But it was Ali and Joe, and this is Tommy and... <laughs> And a personal foul going against Nebraska. Roughing the passer. DFA doubleheader Saturday. Ohio State and Illinois. Bob Hoying and company taking on the Fighting Illini. Ohio State's moved up to number six in the country. And then it's Florida and LSU. Mike and Ron will be there to bring you that one. As Florida with one of the best receiving cores in the nation. And also Eric Gretz, who can do it all in their backfield. The personal foul against Oklahoma State, roughing the passer, and Pat Jones hanging his head on the sideline. Can Ohio State handle Illinois? I think so, but they haven't been able to for John Cooper yet, but they're pretty powerful group. Three tight ends set Nebraska, and another pretty powerful group right here, looking for its first point to the night. Frazier keeps it. Paid the price for the keeper. Got about four. Jason Gilman ran him down from the backside, along with Scott Harmon from the secondary. The strength of the Oklahoma State defense is they run real well. They're not big. 
but they run from sideline to sideline, so they should be able to play the option fairly well. Jason Gill, number 83, will make this play, but if you run at them, you have the size advantage, and also I think eventually you have to get to their secondary with some play action passes. The one pass tonight, that was Frazier to Muhammad. Second down and six, Nebraska at the OSU 11. Blitz coming on the counter to Jones, and he knocked off his pins by little Scott Harmon. There's a kid that can play. Senior only 5'8", 190, but he will always be around the ball. And I think that not giving up a touchdown in the first quarter is going to hold for another one here. I would say it's a safe bet unless there's a timeout <laughs> call. Right. Keith Burns was on a blitz on the last play, and he really destroyed the blocking of Nebraska. And Cornhuskers will have third down and long on the other end. As Coach Jones says, boys, let's take it the other way. We played a quarter, and the Cowboys at home lead by six. Here's we start the second quarter, Mike. Oklahoma State with a blitz. Keith Burns is going to come inside to try to maybe offset the blocking angles of Nebraska, but really who makes this play is Scott Harmon, number 36. You see him just get inside and underneath the big lineman of Nebraska. Third down and six. Seventh play of the Nebraska drive. It's third and six. They're 18 out of 19 in the red zone. Frazier lobs it up over Scott Muhammad who was open at the five-yard line. Had him wide open. Abdul Muhammad, number 27. They brought three receivers to one side, ran off the outside receiver. Abdul Muhammad, number 27, is wide open. Tommy Frazier just overthrows it. But I'm going to tell you something, Brad, it's not... I mean, there's a big crown on this football field. When you throw from the middle, I, mean, I don't know if we can show it a little later, but it's a big crown, and when you're not used to it, you may be high on some throws to the middle to the outside. Byron Bennett, three out of four on the year. And 28 yards out. The exact same spot that Vaughn kicked his from. And this one's good as well. So Byron Bennett gets Nebraska within a field goal. 14.52 to go first half. 199 wins walking the Nebraska sidelines in 21 seasons. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Jerry? Gentlemen, in 1971, when they expanded Lewis Field, because of the buildings around, they had to expand inwardly. The way they did it was they dug the field down 12 feet, got rid of a cinder track, and they expanded by adding 20 rows down toward the field. Now, what it's done here, it's gave some great seats here for the folks to watch the game, but it's posed a problem. Here is the corner of the end zone. Six and a half feet away, there's a concrete wall behind me. And, of course, above the wall, the animals. So, in order to run the fade here out of the end zone, it's going to take some special skill and a lot of courage. If you're not careful, you'll end up with a face full of concrete. Back up there. Tell you what, you want to fade out there, and you might fade to black when it's <laughs> over. <laughs> that field is definitely crowned. We're looking from one side, and it's waist high on the other side of the field, much like the field at Oklahoma is much like this. And that's when you're, you're the quarterback, and you're throwing from the middle of the field. You have to really aim it downhill. Tommy Frazier just let the ball go too high. Don Steeler will kick. Raphael Denson and Shannon Culver back deep for the Cowboys. Shannon Culver's going to feel this one, but it's way back there, nine yards deep, and he won't bring it out. 71-yard mark for the Cornhuskers. Good-looking drive. It's 314, only one pass. Frazier to Muhammad. The other were six runs, and it set up Bennett from 28 yards out. Now, Brad, if you're the defensive coordinator, Charlie McBride in Nebraska, now the field position's in your favor. You want to try to force the turnover. You want to make Tony Jones do something he's not used to. Jones has been a cool customer so far for a kid making his second start ever. He's got three wide receivers on first down. Three out of six throwing the ball so far. He's going to try another one. Screen pass. Nobody out there to screen. But still, Joe Jefferson got about six yards. I don't know where his linemen were, but he did what he could. Little Joe Jefferson got out to the 26, almost the 27-yard line. He was a tailback when he first came to Oklahoma State. They moved him to fullback, so he has very good hands as a fullback. He's more of the running, pass 
receiving fullback. And just a little brush block on Dante Jones, number 84, the screen. But the linemen do not develop that screen. They're not ready to block. That's Joe's first catch of the year. Good for seven yards, second and three. And Nebraska jumps again. They blow it dead as the pass is out to Shannon Culver. And of course, the Cornhuskers just said that they were drawn off. I don't think so this time, but we'll wait and see. Our referee, Terry Turlington. You point anyway, even if you weren't. <laughs> you always try it. Boy, all that for an offside penalty. Against the Cornhuskers. In Following your screen, they're going to call them Billy Wade, number 93. Sitting on the right guard, he just moved. Kind of embarrassing. Out in there, no man's land. In the not-so-neutral zone. Go on ball movement and tell all defensive coaches, watch the football. So a first down by penalty for Oklahoma State. So far, each team with four miscues. They're going to throw incomplete. That one intended for Chris Lofton. Now they start heating him up a little bit, Brad. They start showing him these different things. They had him forced into a checkoff there. Tony Jones checked off to the streak route, but there was a bust by the wide receivers. Pat Jones with a freshman quarterback doesn't want to give him too much room to change plays in the line of scrimmage because, as we said last year at this time, he was getting ready to play cross town at the high school. That's right. In fact, his high school will be in town this weekend. There's Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator for Nebraska. Second and ten. Now Jefferson got it out close to the 35. And then got banged around by the front wall, led by Dante Jones, number 84. He's been a little banged up himself for Nebraska, back in there as a starter tonight. And they say when Trev Elmer's leaves, Dante Jones will be the next great player in the defensive line for Nebraska. Third down eight. Dante will get his chance to start bringing it on Tony Jones. If they give it forward progress, it's going to be a first down to Culver. And I think he got it. I didn't think he gave him a bad spot, Brad. I really do. I, I think he had it, but the spot's not good. Depends who wins out here with the football. Pat Jones didn't like that last step that the official took, I don't think. We're going to have another conference. Well, they'll take a look at this one. They won't have to bring the chains very far. See how crowned that field is right now. <laughs> Not quite crowned enough. An inch to go. But an inch can be a mile against Nebraska sometimes, and Pat Jones knows that. Shannon Culver, number three, is going to make the catch, and then he is really going to get level by number eight, Tyrone Williams. But you see where the official is? He's behind. He can't see where the ball is. <laughs> Most coaches think officials can't see, period. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's fourth down, and you saw how much. A chain length or two. And who knows? We still have a long ways to go, but with 12 and a half minutes to go in the first half, this could sway the ball game one way or another for a young Oklahoma State offense. And Tony Jones should have it as he followed his right guard, Alan Orton. First down, Cowboys. Pat Jones realizes if he does any 
chance to upset Nebraska, he has to put points on the board and keep Tommy Frazier off on the other sideline. So now that field position that wasn't the greatest starting at its own 20 for Oklahoma State, and they've worked it out to almost the 42. First down, Teresa. three times. Man, they're living in Nebraska territory in this first half. And they got beat 55 nothing and only threw, threw three passes, but Pat Jones says, I was going to try to find the tailback in that game. Last year. I couldn't beat him. Mark Batts, Pat Jones had a good comment. He says he's tougher than a boot. He just booted it for six yards in second and four. Flicks from the secondary. Toby Wright makes it pay off on the run force. At the 30-yard line, he makes the tackle. Tony Jones has some interested onlookers at this game, Jerry Punch. Indeed, I have found Kelvin and Sheila Jones, who are the proud parents of sensational freshman quarterback Tony Jones from nearby Tulsa. Let me ask you, Dad, a year ago, your young man played against Stillwater High School in front of 5,000 folks tonight at Sunrise, Nebraska, and national television. You talked to him a couple of days ago. What did he say? Well, he had to remember to make his reads. He had to be poised. And he said the game was a lot faster than it is in high school. The coaches said parents could take a lesson from how you two handled the recruiting process. You wouldn't let anyone meet with him outside the family home. You had to be there when they met. Why the, why the strict philosophy? We wanted the recruiting process to be enjoyable. We did not want to let it get chaotic. Got to ask you, Bob. He's had some success, uh, but he still has to focus on what he wants to do. He's had some success, but he still has to focus on what he wants to be after football. Yes. Once Tony finishes his undergraduate work here at Oklahoma State, he intends to go on to law school. Well, I tell you, a prime example of what great role models and parents can do for a young man. Brad, you got to love that. Dad said, remember your read. My dad used to say, don't call anymore for money. Draw play. Back to the line of scrimmage for David Thompson. That's it. The other thing you have to realize in recruiting sometimes when you're recruiting a good player like Tony Jones is that you find out that both the mom and dad came to Oklahoma <laughs> right. State. You're starting from a deficit to begin with. So did your sister, your aunt, your uncle, That's and everybody right. else. Pat Jones had an in. There's a good look at Tony. Mentioning the recruiting guys, they wanted him to be able to have a, an open mind. They wanted to make the right decision for the right reasons, not an emotional decision about where he was going to school. That's why they made sure he met with everyone in the living room with them there, back up there. Tony says business management, and then maybe... Who knows, lost to it. David Thompson cut back and got maybe two to the 25. <laughs> Tony wants to take that business in that law school, Nick left. That would mind being a sports agent. I said, there you go, there's some money there. <laughs> Might be able to represent himself. <laughs> yeah. He's a very poised young man. Third down and long. We'll see his poise again with 8-10 left. 
first half. 6-3, Pat Jones Cowboys. Surprising seventh rank Oklahoma, so uh, seventh rank Nebraska so far. There's how far they've gone. Six and a half minutes and a good looking drive. Timeout for the Cowboys. That's their second. But they're getting down close and don't want to waste another opportunity. 7.55 left in the half. Little trap play up inside. Anthony Greenlee again, number 55, the left guard with a good block. Number 55 blocks down and just everything caves in for Mark Spatz. Tougher than a boot. <laughs> Moving the ball to the one-yard line. That's the biggest back they have. 6'2", 230. First and goal, Cowboys. The first two times he touched the ball this year in the season opener, he put it in the end zone. The first time he touches it tonight, same story. Extra point, it's good. Oklahoma State, so far shocking number seven, Nebraska. They're up by 10. With a good lead block by Roger Franks, number 32. Roger Franks coming right at you. The good lead block, take off, touchdown. Kid that was part of the Michigan Dream Team last year, Lewis Adams, averaged over 10 yards a carry in high school. This year, tried 13 carries, 15 yards, but three Oklahoma State touchdowns, including that last one yard job. 13-3. Brad Nessler, Mike Gottfried, and Jerry Punch with you in Stillwater. Nice kickoff. 80-yard mark. That's how far Nebraska will have to go. They'll start from the 20. It took 16 plays, 825. They mixed it up beautifully. And Adams took it in from one yard up. Look at that time of possession. Twice as long in the hands of the hometown Cowboys. They've just dominated the first half. With 6.27 to go on the clock, Tommy Frazier has to get busy. First down, Nebraska from its own 20. Calvin Jones, quick seven up the middle before Keith Byrne made the tackle. They had a lot of success about the first four running plays where they ran Calvin Jones just right at the defense in front of Oklahoma State, and then they got away from it a little bit. Started to try to run some counters and some options, so they may get back and try and just pound Calvin Jones right at him. Not very often you have three Butkus nominees in the same ball game. Nebraska has two on their side. Burns for Oklahoma State who just made the tackle is their nominee. It's second down at three. End around time. And Oklahoma State was waiting for it. They stopped. Buster Johnson short of the first down. And it burns again and makes the hit. Tom Osborne trying to slow down the pursuit of Keith Burns, number 44, the linebacker with the reverse. Keith Burns looks into the backfield and now sees the reverse, is able to get back, get in, a, in an area where he makes the tackle on Buster Johnson, number 33. Third down and a yard. Everybody up close for the Cowboy defense. Jones, I don't think so. It's fourth down. Ainsley, the linebacker. Richard Ainsley, if you ever teach a player how to take on the isolation, watch Richard Ainsley, number 40. 
going to be a double up inside. Watch him just meet the fullback in the backfield, stops the play, then makes the tackle on Calvin Jones. What a play by Ainsley. Oklahoma State's taking a timeout. That's their final timeout. But they're going to get the ball back here in a moment on fourth down and a yard. We've got a timeout. We'll take it. 4.42 left in the half. Oklahoma State by 10. Boy, boy, this could be gigantic. Still have two quarters and 4 minutes 42 seconds to go, but his team up by 10. He doesn't want to be number 200. You got that right. Byron Bennett to kick. Oklahoma State's got 10 men up. But they back off it. And Harmon with a fair catch call and taken at the 29-yard line. 42-yard kick. The opening portion of the game, Nebraska picked up two first downs. It looked like they had everything going their way until right here, Mike. Tommy Frazier just dropped the football, and ever since that play, Nebraska has just not been able to hit on all cylinders. Oklahoma State converted that one into three points. Their second time they got inside the Nebraska 20. They got another field goal and added a touchdown after an 80-yard march a few minutes ago. Now they got the ball back. They're out of timeout, but they've got it at their own 29-yard line. Wide receiver screen again. Denson, a lot of white jerseys to meet him. Pass on the 4.20 and the clock running, first half. This is the first time Oklahoma State has led Nebraska by double digits at least since 1977. They can't seem to go any farther back to see if it's ever happened again or before. Bounces out near the 36. It's going to bring up third down at about four. 3.45 left on the clock. Tom Osborne has to be thinking if he stops him here to start spending the time out to get this football back to try to get something going offensively. But he needs a big play out of his defense. And the Cowboys willing to use up as much of that 25-second clock as possible. Oklahoma State field position. They've got a third and four here. possession. Nebraska had a tendency to walk their linebackers up to the line of scrimmage even with the down lineman. That's how they got caught inside with the trap. So a moment ago Kevin Field, the inside linebacker coach, made an adjustment to put them back in their 4-3 look so they wouldn't be susceptible to the trap and also this short passing game. It seems to be working right now a little bit as far as holding up in the yardage. Back up there. From the 41 first down, Oklahoma State. Straight ahead. Joe Jefferson Oh, he's making most of his carries tonight. Out to the 47, Dante Jones brought him down. And now without any timeouts remaining, but you've got to wonder if Oklahoma State thinks, hey, why don't we get some more points? Right now, if, you, if you're Oklahoma State, you might think about one shot to the end zone here, the deep pass off of play action. They've had some success running the ball. Pat Jones might just take his shot right here with a deep, long bomb, a post, or a, a takeoff here off of play action. Shannon Culver's the long ball threat. Over 26 yards of catch coming into this one. He's to the top of the screen. They pitch it to Johnson. He gets the first down at midfield. Well, not quite. Almost got the first down at midfield. Spun his way exactly to the stripe. Looks like he's about a foot shy. John Reese forced on the corner. Coming up at halftime, which is less than two minutes away. We've got an update on the Braves-Phillies, and Fred McGriff's home run has the Braves taking care of business so far tonight in the halftime blitz. And a report from Tallahassee, side of the big game between the number one and number three teams in the country coming up on Saturday. That's all at halftime. Third down, short. Less than a yard. And they don't get the yard. Nice play defensively by Ed Stewart. There's the guy Mike talked about a little while ago. They'll blitz him. They did. And it'll be fourth down. Ed Stewart 
Stewart, when he first came to Nebraska, wanted to be a defensive back. They put him as a linebacker because they wanted a speed linebacker. He quit. He dropped off the team for about three days. Tom Osborne had to sit down with him and try to convince him to be a linebacker. Well, you see number 32 has developed into a pretty good linebacker. Not the biggest guy in the world, and 215s may be sopping wet, but he can hit. He just showed it on that last play. It forces a fourth down, a long two coming up. So Oklahoma State, just when they had things going well and you started to wonder if they were going to look for more points, now they'll be happy to get away a punt and let their defense, their highly ranked defense, take the field against Nebraska here in the last minute or so. Hey, Pat Jones, you never feel safe against Nebraska. You've been around. He said, he, I've seen it all from Nebraska. He said, one year we were ranked number one in defense. They beat us 54 to nothing. <laughs> So he says, I've seen it all. So he, he can't relax, but he has to really be pleased with the way his team played first half. The last time that Oklahoma State had a lead on Nebraska at halftime, nine years ago, they lost it by giving up 17 unanswered in the second half. As we said, you have to go back to 77 to find him ahead in double digits. Pat Jones, 0-9 against that guy. Tom Osborne, 19 0 and one That one tie was in 1973. He was a rookie coach. And he might have made a rookie coaching mistake late in that game as he went for a first down instead of kicking a field goal in a tie football game. It cost him. He hasn't made that many mistakes since, so. <laughs> No, when he's close to 200, there's been a lot of victims along the way. So far, Oklahoma State's made Nebraska a victim, if you can believe that. Got Tyner to kick. Corey Dixon back deep for Nebraska. Ford Huskers with 10 men up. Tyner off the side of his foot. Not a good punt. Does take an Oklahoma State bounce, however. And it's going to roll around the 31-yard line. With 109 left. Only a 21-yard kick. That may leave the door open a little bit for Nebraska as the Ford Huskers with their timeouts remaining. Two of them. Most important thing for Tom Osborne at halftime, he's got a flat football team on his hands right now. They're flat. I'm, look, I'm looking at him on the sideline right here. There's no emotion out of Nebraska football team. They're just a flat football team. Frazier throws over the middle off the play action. Has his man to the 42-yard line. Tremaine Bell. And that should be good enough for a Nebraska first down. Still two timeouts for Nebraska left, so they've got plenty of time to try to make something happen. They get the clock stop while they move to six. 102 left in the half. Out of the shotgun. Frazier scrambles. That might be a lateral. Somebody better get on that ball. Nope, they're going to blow it dead. I think you're right. I, I don't think there's any doubt that this is a lateral. George Wallstead, the defensive coach with a headset, he believes you're right, too. Jones is the guy that scooped it up, but they had blown the whistle. I don't think there's any doubt. Watch Tommy Frazier as he moves up. Now he knows he's going to get sacked. Turns. If this ball is not behind him, I don't know what it is. That is a lateral. He's trying to get the ball to Calvin Jones out there, but uh, he got away with one, Brad. Second down and ten. Second down and ten. Oklahoma State hot about it. Doesn't matter. 48 seconds left. Again on the shotgun. Screen pass to Jones. A bunch of 300-pounders in front, and he got a first down in OSU territory at the 46-yard line. We'll see if that play comes back to haunt them because now they're moving past the 50-yard line. Still have two timeouts with 39 seconds to go. Keep your eye on Abdul Muhammad, number 27. He's their big, big play receiver. There he is. First down, again from the gun. Frazier going deep. Overshot his man, threw that one way in the end zone, intended for Reggie Ball. I think he just threw that ball away. He just didn't see anything there. Reggie Ball was not, he was covered. Delvin Miles, number seven, was right on top of number seven, Reggie Ball. Down 29 seconds left of the break. And a second and 10. Play action. Frazier gets 
Pressured again, and down he goes. Lorenzo Green tracked him down. Keith Burns told us when we talked to him the other day, he said, we were embarrassed last year. Our defensive players went up there, and we didn't expect to win. A lot of players felt we were beat before we even went on the field. We got a little better plan this year, and we feel like we can play with them, and this first half has proven that. Brings up third down and a dozen for Nebraska. Timeout with 21 seconds left. That's sort of the look the Cornhuskers have had since early in the first quarter. Don't forget, we're just 21 seconds away from halftime. Update you on the National League Championship Series. Halftime blitz. Take you around the country and update you on virtually every game going on this weekend, including that all-important one, and we'll have a report from Tallahassee, where Florida State gets ready for number three Miami this weekend. Who do you like in the Florida State-Miami game? I don't think it's going to come down to a kick this year. I just uh, think it's Florida State's turn. They're pretty darn good. Yeah, Miami has the speed to match up. I think the, where Miami is uh, has to play is their Florida State defense will try to pressure Costa, the quarterback of Miami. Oklahoma State will try to pressure Nebraska's quarterback here, Tommy Frazier. Third down at 12. Swings it out. Jones one-on-one -on -one in the flat. And he lost the battle. Nice job uh, staying there and knocking him out of bounds was Link Harden. That's not an easy tackle against the Calvin Jones. When Harden got out there, the junior out of Galveston to make the hit. And he's 6'4", 230 pounds. So when he's going against Calvin Jones, who's 5'11", 210 with good speed. Throw one for the end zone here. That's what they're going to apparently do on fourth down and five with one timeout remaining and 14 seconds left to work. Frazier loads it, goes deep, got his man, out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Eight seconds, Brad, left. Still, Nebraska has one timeout, so they have time to try to throw one in yet. Corey Dixon gathered that one in. Got Harmon out there to knock him out. Corey Dixon faked the post pattern, then came out on the corner route. Ball was thrown very well, then knocked out of bounds by Scott Harmon, number 36. Stops the clock. And one play for Tommy Frazier to try to punch it in with a throw. He's got Muhammad and Tremaine Bell as his wide receivers. Muhammad to fade to the corner. Not quite. Muhammad looking for a penalty and didn't get it. Nice coverage by Delvin Miles, who's been battling an injury out there on the left corner. He may have pushed a little bit on that, but he got away with it. Muhammad incomplete. You see the tail end of the play. Number seven, Delvin Miles, using his right arm to Thank kind of right. guide out to a Mohammed, number 27, but got away with it. 26 yard field goal coming up for Byron Bennett. He's already hit from 28. Trying to cut the Cowboys' lead to seven at halftime. And does. But still, for the first time since 1984, Oklahoma State trying to ride to an eight-game winning streak on their home field. Right now, they're shocking number seven, Nebraska. 13-6, Cowboys at intermission. Oklahoma number seven team in the country. The Nebraska Cornhuskers, not much to show for it. Mike Godfrey, beginning of the ballgame, big question was not only whether or not Nebraska could move against that highly ranked Oklahoma State defense, but could they do anything against Nebraska's defense? And I think so far, everything's going well for the Brad, Cowboys. Great game plan by Oklahoma State. They're not asking Tony Jones to do a lot, not asking him to beat themselves. He's thrown screen passes and little short passes, and they've controlled the ball. Field position's been their favor all the way. Nebraska's only averaging 2.2 yards on first down, so they're losing first down. Mike Gundy sitting downstairs, former Oklahoma a state quarterback he could probably only wish that the game plan could have gone this well back 86 through 88 to put up these kind of numbers and that kind of time of possession well the time of possession they've just controlled the football they, they they've really have been able to run effectively and again not put their young quarterback freshman quarterback in bad situations so an excellent game plan now tom osborne you have to figure they're going to flat football team. He has to get their attention at halftime. The first six, seven minutes of this third quarter, I would expect Nebraska to play a little bit more inspired. He was worried about that fact, the two weeks off. They could get people healthy that way. 
The only problem, he was wondering whether or not there'd be rustiness. I think we've seen the rustiness so far tonight. And the teams decide they're going to try to kick it the other way. Remember, at the beginning of the game, Oklahoma State had won the toss and deferred, so not only do they have a touchdown lead, they get the football first. Tom Steeler will tee it up for Nebraska in back deep. Shannon Culver, number three, joined by Raphael Denson. They've only played a half, but for the first time in nine years, the Cowboys leading the Huskers as we're set for the third quarter. Culver a yard deep. And it's a touchback. Oklahoma State from its own 20-yard line. Let's go to Jerry Punt. Doc. Gentlemen, at halftime, a tremendous amount of emotion, as you might expect, in the Oklahoma State locker room. They sense the upset. You got to love Pat Jones. He said, at halftime, guys, we're going to dance with the girl that got us here. We're going to keep doing what we're doing well. The trap inside, the spread draw. And don't be surprised, guys, to see Oklahoma State do a little offensive gadgetry in the second half. Back up there. So far, they've mixed it up beautifully, as Mike said. And their opening play of the third quarter, a rollout and a throw, and Culver's got it. Made the catch and then turned around and ran right into Baron Miles. About a three yards to go. It's been a good-looking girl they've been dancing with because <laughs> everything's coming up right for Oklahoma State, playing with a lot of emotion. Pat Jones really has the short week because he played last Saturday, really has his team ready to play. I tell you what, she is the homecoming queen right now. 10 out of 14, 79 yards, completed six straight, and he's used five different receivers. That's pretty good for a true freshman quarterback in his second career start. Second and seven. Draw. Closed in a hurry, though, on Johnson. Out to the 25. Pat Jones has the greatest attitude. He says, hey, we want to go out. We want to play well against Nebraska. As much transition as this, this particular team in this program has gone through in the last several years, I just want us to go play good. I, I can certainly, I can live with the outcome. We, I've experienced all of it. We've experienced all of it. We've had near misses. We've gotten hammered. There's been a couple years that, that we probably maybe should have won the ball game and lost close, but um, I just want us to play well. Maybe he has the kind of attitude that everybody would love to have, but this game puts a lot of pressure on him. Third down and five. Johnson. Boogies to the 43. Tyrone Williams and Toby Wright knocked him out. First down, Cowboys. Had to be a bust in coverage here by Tyrone Williams, number eight. Toby Wright, number three, because watch what happens. Out of the backfield comes Darrell Johnson. There's just nobody there. Both the corner and safety work inside. He's wide open. Out to the 44-yard line. And there's what Boogie's done. Daryl Boogie Johnson. <laughs> On the option, the pitch late. And beautifully read by Nebraska, led by Trev Alberts, who forced the play and helped make the tackle. We talked about Oklahoma State at halftime. Doc, how about uh, Nebraska at the break? Spoke with Tom Osborne. He was very concerned. Said my team hasn't played well on either side of the ball, but the biggest concern was defense. He said that Oklahoma State has hurt us inside with their trap scheme. We're going to make some significant adjustments inside with our stunt, the defensive line, and primarily the inside linebackers. So watch for a little bit different play out of the 4-3 up front. Back up there. That last play helped the cause, dropping a two-yard loss on Oklahoma State, second and 12. Movement in one line or the other. I think it's going to go against Oklahoma State. Joe's, Matt Joe's playing on the left side. Then ball foul, ball start on the offense, second down. On second down, 17. Those are the kind of situations you don't want to find yourself in. Into the line on the left side, both the tackle and guard, Matt Jones and Anthony Greenley, number 55. But I sense a little bit more excitement out of the defense here in Nebraska. And Mike Anderson, number 48, the middle linebacker, is back in the ball game. Jones may have 
change that one on second down and 17. Rolls left, fires. Oh, would have been a great catch. It was a heck of a throw going the wrong way, and Rafael Denson got a hand on it. Well, just what Jerry Punch was talking about with Nebraska, they'll move their linebackers up in a blitz where they just cover the guards. As soon as Tony Jones, the quarterback, sees that, he checks off to something outside where he can sprint out away from. You see the linebackers, Mike Anderson and Ed Stewart, number 32, in the line of scrimmage. As soon as the young quarterback, Tony Jones, sees that, he's going to sprint out to the left side and throw the ball to Raphael Denson, number 22. Third down, 17. going to get a first down. He got tagged pretty good. Penalty marker. Miles with the hit. And they get a personal foul out of this. It's a first down Cowboys. Did he hit him too high? What's the call? I think it's on Oklahoma State. Maybe on Cavs lost at number 80. Chris Lofton, number 80. Mike thrown right at the very end of the play. A clip. Now they go against the Cowboys. Can find number 80, Chris Lofton. There he is. Just a little push. Oh, that's a clip. There's not a little push there. It's a yeah. clip on Baron Miles, number 14. Try to chase Tony Jones. There's the clip on number 80. Chris Lofton. Now the discussion whether or not Nebraska takes the penalty. They won't. Fourth down. Fourth down. Fourth down. Fourth down. So that Nebraska defense, Mike Dead, appears more excited here in the first three and a half minutes of the third quarter, and they forced a punt. We'll see if the offense comes in the same way with Tommy Frazier. Scott Snyder to kick it. Corey Dixon will drop back deep. Philadelphia just scored a safety. They're only behind 9-2 to two now. <laughs> Snyder a little better kick this time. Dixon tags it down at the play. And got himself about 7 on the return. With 12 minutes and 36 seconds remaining, third quarter, Nebraska on offense, and we come back. Tony Jones, the freshman quarterback, brings him up. Only about a yard for Joe Jefferson. Tom Osborne's won a lot of games, and Jerry Punch is with another guy that's won a lot of games in this state. Doc? Brad, you cannot talk about college football in the state of Oklahoma without mentioning this man right here, the legend, Barry Switzer. And, Coach, thanks for coming out and joining us. You made a lot of trips to Stillwater to compete tonight, a little bit different reason. I'm on the way to Dallas now. You got, got lost, you got in Stillwater. But uh, it's great to be here. Pat's a good friend. Tom's a good friend. It's a great game, and I got a... I'm an uncle-in-law to Ben Roots, a Nebraska freshman quarterback, and of course uh, got a lot of Oklahoma fans here. It's a great game. I, I don't care who wins. Just uh, one of them. Talk about popularity. You think Elvis walked on the field when you came down here and people were going nuts. Uh, let me ask you about your son now. Plays at Oklahoma, OU, Texas, coming up this weekend in Dallas. Your thoughts? Well, I, you know, I think Oklahoma won the game, but that's a game anything can go. You know, it's a great classic. Uh, I think Oklahoma has the best team. Uh, and we'll just have to see. I hope they win it. We need to have a good win, and I think we're ready to do it. Coach, do you miss it? Do you ever think about maybe dusting off the whistle, headed back to the side? I miss it tonight. I miss the competition. I miss this time. I don't miss the other 250 days a year, but I miss it tonight. 16 years, 157 victories, second overall in the Big 8. Coach, thanks for coming down and joining us. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Barry Switzer, a legend in coaching in college football. Brad? Third down, eight. Pass intended for Johnson out in the flat. Toby right there to meet him, incomplete, and it'll be a punting situation for Oklahoma State. Let's talk about guys that have put some wins up. Tom Osborne to top the heap, Barry next in line. Bud Wilkinson, the great streaks of a couple of years without losing with 145. Bob Devaney, over 100. And he preceded Tom at Nebraska. Still the athletic director, Emeritus. 
chance to see him last night over at the hotel. He's looking good. Right, when I was in the league, I'll tell you, Tom Osborne and Barry Switzer really do have a mutual respect for each other. They battled, I'm telling you, in years here in Nebraska, Oklahoma, but really a lot of respect for each other. And I, I like Barry Switzer, I really do. I think he's a good person. Tyner, oh boy, he got all of this one. Dixon's got a back pedal to the 28 yard line. Little bit of a gap on the outside. Levon Williams made the tackle on special teams. Nebraska still trails by seven, but the Huskers of Nebraska, their own 44 yard line. Time to air one out. Dixon in motion. Frazier rolls, sets, and airs one out. Tight ends out there, incomplete. Scott Harmon broke it up, intended for Armstrong. Right had, on the money, Mike. Had Gerald Armstrong down the middle, but Scott Harmon, number 36, was right with him. They have to attack the secondary, oh, Brad. Eventually, they've got to get to the secondary because the front has held up for Oklahoma State. Tommy Frazier throwing the deep post route to the tight end. Gerald Armstrong covered very well by Scott Harmon. Now that's the moxie of a kid that started 30 straight games. Scott Harmon back there playing center field to break it up. Second down and 10. Nebraska shows a full house back to you. They're going to run the option. Frazier keeps it. Boy, there's some banging going Frazier on down there. The right he got it. On the About a yard short of a first down, Scott Harmon helped out on the tackle. There's a kid that's one of the defensive captains. You talk about leadership on Oklahoma State's team. They've got all four of their captains on the defensive side of the ball. They kind of hope that there's going to be some leadership like Harmon gives them on defense that will surface somewhere on the offense. Well, I think it has surfaced. Tony Jones, I think the quarterback, even though he's a freshman, they believe in him. Nebraska, that high-powered ground game just hasn't materialized, although Jones is going to get a first down out of this one. It's 25. Ainsley and Williams make the stop. Calvin, a legitimate Heisman candidate coming into the season, and he had 127 yards in the opener. And that was just in about two and a half quarters of play and then was injured. And other than uh, one play duty, the last time Nebraska was on the field, and that was only to get him in the NCAA statistics because you have to play in 75% of your team games. He has been banged up the last three weeks. He's only got 29 yards tonight. But the last one good for a first down. Frazier keeps the game. That's open there on that side, and this time Frazier gets 15. And Oklahoma State, a little chink in the armor, I guess, Mike. That's about the only thing that Nebraska's been able to do on the ground, that play. Looks like Nebraska cheats their blocking scheme a little bit on the option. I want you to follow the fullback here, number 40, Corey Schlesinger, because he will get the key block. Even though he gets a little cheap fake, now watch number 40. will pick up the linebacker, kick him out. Number 40, Richard, Richard, Richie Ainsley is blocked. And then Tommy Frazier is able to keep the ball. That was a keep for the quarterback all the way. This time they give it to Schlesinger, the fullback, and he backs his way for about six yards inside the 25. Now you get a little feel that offensively they're hitting the inside, the option. They've made some adjustments in the blocking. They're throwing the ball on first down every now and then. Now they've got Oklahoma State off balance a little bit. Oklahoma State defensive coaches said, you know, it looked like Nebraska for the first time in a lot of years, didn't have a big banging fullback, but Schlesinger answered the call on that one good for six yards. Second and four. The counter to Jones, a blocker in front. Calvin Jones finally gets the wheels moving to the four-yard line. 20 yards that time. That's the first time he's been able to get loose tonight. Well, they followed the, the block of Zach Weger, who Milton Tenafor, the offensive line coach, says he's the best player he's ever worked with. Number 72, he said, I've had all those great linemen, but Zach Weger has more mobility, and you can see that mobility as he leads the counter play downfield. That big Nebraska front wall every year. And that helps Jones get down to the four-yard line. First and goal. Frazier keeps it again. Touchdown. Finally, Nebraska in the Oklahoma State end zone. Credit Tom Osborne, Frank Solich. Good change in the blocking scheme on the option. 
Tommy Frazier, again, a key block by Corey Schlesinger, number 40. And this was a keep all the way for Tommy Frazier. Stretches the football out for the touchdown. Byron Bennett in for the point after. Fort Huskers took their best starting field position of the night and made it count for six. Bennett to try to make it seven, and he cuts it right down the middle. We're tied at 13 in Stillwater. Pat Jones says that's all right. We're getting it back here in a moment. 5.24 left third quarter, 13 apiece. That big offensive line for Nebraska over the years, and they have had great ones, obviously. The Stein Coolers, and, and look at this group. And right in the middle is Ken Malin. Doesn't he look like a pickup in a whole garage full of semis? Look at this. He's the only guy that's not 300 pounds. And he's 276. Brad, you see Lance Lundberg on the right side. He's 6'4", 300 pounds. When they looked at him in high school, he was a split in. 6'4", 250 pounds in an eight-man football team in Wausau, Nebraska. That is the biggest split in I've ever seen, eight-man <laughs> football. <laughs> there they are, slapping hands on the sidelines, having gotten the Cornhuskers their first touchdown of the night. Just a reminder, later on in the game, Mike and I will be naming a Wrangler player of the game. 5.24 left in the third. Big 8 opener, Oklahoma State. And 7th ranked Nebraska. That's Shannon Culver. He's with Raphael Denson back deep, awaiting Tom Sealer's kick. kickoff man is for the most part kept the Cowboys pinned down in the end zone and have had to work from their own 20 yard line. 56 yards in two and a half minutes. Good looking drive by Nebraska. Tommy Frazier from four yards out on the option. Now Brad if you're Charlie McBride you're looking for a turnover. Oklahoma State has not turned the football over. On offense to Nebraska. Nebraska is looking for the interception fumble. And remember, Tony Jones, as Mike mentioned, for a freshman, a great statistic. He hasn't thrown a pick all year. Keep it on the ground. Johnson back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. And that Nebraska defense is getting fired up now. Trev Albert in on the stop. There's Charlotte Fry, the defensive coordinator. He wants to force Oklahoma State into throwing the football. Tony Jones. He wants to make him throw the ball down the field so that they have the shot at the interception. Just to put a little more pressure on him. Mike Gundy told us he wasn't as worried about the rush maybe on Jones either. He was worried about the disguised coverages of Nebraska in that secondary, whether the kids could handle it. He pumps fakes and goes deep. He can handle it. Up oh, ball loose, incomplete. Shannon Culver had it in his hands. That was a perfectly thrown ball. Baron Miles. Poked it out of there on Culver. So you always keep your defensive back to try to punch it out. Baron Miles, number 14, was able to get it out of the hands of Shannon Culver. Oklahoma State's had success with the screen. Let's see if they screen to the fullback. They've had too many third down and 10 situations, or third down and long situations in this quarter. And Nebraska in the half has controlled things and drawn even at 13. Third and 10 Cowboys. Look out from behind. Jones got away from Albert. Not going to get a first down, but he got six yards. Toby Wright in the open field made the stop. Boy, Albert does play hard every play. He just keeps coming from that backside. Exactly what they talked about this year. Nebraska went to the 4-3 defense to give him a little bit more of a pass rush. And Trap Albert said last year we'd take the first punch on defense, but this year we want to give it. They've given it a couple of times this quarter. Second three and out now for the Cowboys in this quarter. You can feel a little bit of a lull from the crowd here in Lewis Field. And the punt coming up from Scott Tyner. He blasted his last one over 50 yards. Got another good one. Dixon can run up on this. Takes it on the bounce and steps out of bounds. Trying to keep his feet in. Goes out just inside the 30. Don't forget, sports night. 
with Keith Overman and Susie Colbert coming up. A new look at sports on ESPN2. They even wear nice clothes. I like that show. They look like Hell's Angels the other night <laughs> when I was watching. He, Keith Overman had a black jacket on. and See whether Keith or Susie wears leather tonight <laughs> on sports night. Oh, that's this weekend, rather, not tonight. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 13 apiece. Nebraska with the ball back. Frazier late catch to Jones. That's about the first time he's used the trailer all night. Boy, he waited till the last instant, took a shot, but they got nine yards out of it. You're right, Brad, as you watch Tommy Frazier come down the line of scrimmage. On the down the line, now hold it right here. Now he's looking at this defensive man. He knows he's going to play him, so he kicks the ball out to Calvin Jones and picks up extra yardage. Jones got nine, second and one. Toss it to Jones this time for the first down and then some. Out to the 43. Are you ready to go by Langford? Langford, another freshman. He's only making his third start tonight on the defensive line for Oklahoma State. There's another guy that can run. Let's go to Jerry. Jerry? After the last Nebraska touchdown, you got to give a call to George Sullivan, the Nebraska trainer. Tommy Frazier came off the field, limping, came to the bench. Sullivan retakes him while Sullivan's working on the right ankle. Osborne is working on Frazier's head, showing him a new diagram for an inside trap. They're working above and below the waist. And apparently it'll work. Back up there. First and 10. Jones right across the 45 before he ran into traffic. We'll give him three. Second and seven. Eric Hobbs in on the stop. When you get it going, it's inside, outside, pass. Any way you want to go. Pass inside, outside. And that's what Nebraska is able to do now. I get the feeling that the offensive line in Nebraska is kind of taking over this game a little bit. With the line of scrimmage, those big tackles and guards are kind of controlling the line of scrimmage. Lawrence Phillips has checked in at the high back spot for Nebraska. He is a freshman, a true freshman. Second down, seven. Two and a half to play, third quarter. Tie game at 13 and still one. If Phillips didn't get the call or didn't want to take the handoff, but Frazier goes down, penalty markers down as well. Dave Grossfield made the tackle. There's Phillips, the freshman running back, and here is Terry Turlington. Dead ball foul, delay of the game. Five second clock ran out right before the snap. A kid for Tom Osborne, that might be a break. <laughs> After that last play blew up, now you still get a chance for a couple more plays. It's still second down, so that may prove to be a break for him. It would have been third down and at least 10, maybe 11. As it is, it's second down and 12. So you're right, uh, basically a free down by penalty. Takes Calvin Jones long to get back in the backfield for Nebraska. Abdul Mohammed, the key receiver. Frazier keeps it. Took a shot, but he might have a first down. He's very close. Ainsley, the linebacker. Harmon from the secondary. That was a shovel draw all the way. It was going to be shovel draw to Abdul Mohammed, but no one was there. I kept waiting for the shovel myself. It was a shovel draw. Pat Jones had a great line on the shovel draw. He says they love the shovel draw after they're killing you. Every now and then they tell their players, we'll have some fun and throw the shovel draw. He says that's how he keeps them interested in Nebraska in practice. Frazier, who's done so well on the ground tonight, decided just to keep it and might have a first down as they're going to bring the sticks out. Last year in the, he did get a first down. Last year, Frazier threw a couple of touchdown passes and also rushed for 38 yards against the Cowboys tonight. 10 rushes, 44 yards, including that one for a first down. Here's the shovel draw right here. Watch number 27, Abdul Muhammad, come underneath. He's looking for the shovel draw. There's no one there, so Tommy Frazier keeps it. And we're starting to get some light rain. Stillwater. Been trying to blow in here. 
most of the afternoon. 157 left third quarter. With Mike Gottfried and Dr. Jerry Punch, Brad Nestler with you from Lewis Field. Nice to have you watching on this Thursday evening. There's a couple people that came prepared. Of course, the people behind them will let them have it here. The next couple of minutes. Well, the officials stop play, and now we're all set. Frazier, the sophomore quarterback, trying to lead the second half comeback. For number seven, Nebraska. Fans trying to get into it for the Cowboy defense. Frazier, through the hands of Corey Dixon, would have been a tough catch, a little bit high. Tommy Frazier's best when he's running play action passes, when he gets the fake and rolls out to the right or left side. A little high again. The crown has really given some problems to Tommy Frazier. The center of that field is so high. He's high on everything outside. Missed his last four passes. We look at Frazier ground level. Second and ten. Tommy wants to throw a screen. Oh, almost picked off. Burns was there, got a hand on it. Roger couldn't find his uh, receiver out there. Badly thrown ball and a mistake. Brandon Stein, number 66, really bumps into Burns. Now watch Keith Burns. He sees the screen, but number 66, Brendan Stein, is just going to bump into him, and that really kept him from intercepting the ball. Third and ten. Three wide out for Frazier. Crowd getting back into it. Here's the option. This time he won't pick up the first down. It's back to lose a yard. Gilden has had a big game. Career sack leader for Oklahoma State. And he stopped Tommy Frazier on this one. Big defensive series for Oklahoma State. Jason Gilden, number 83, just there, makes the play on Tommy Frazier. Forces the punt, but again, Oklahoma State should be backed up, Brad, with bad field position. Byron Bennett will have to give it up. He punted well tonight. This one goes out of bounds. Inside the 20, but not by much. 17-yard line. NFL game day coming up Sunday. Join host Chris Berman with Tom Jackson, Chris Mortensen. For a look at the first half of the season, Joe Theismann for the award-winning NFL preview show. They'll all be there. And then Sunday night, an hour of television's most complete Sunday NFL wrap-up show, NFL primetime. Join the gang, noon Sunday, and then they'll look back at the day at 7. Here it's 13-13. Winding down the third quarter. Oklahoma State back on offense. They have not mustered much on offense. This half, flag down. And we might have a holding call to negate Joe Jefferson's first down run. Don Reese made the tackle. I think you're right here. It's going to be a hold call. It's going to bring it back. And I'll be for number 20, Joe Jefferson. Playing against Oklahoma State. Holding against the Cowboys. Now that field position that was the strong suit for the Cowboys in the first half, slipping away here in the third quarter. Now Mike Gundy and Pat Jones have a choice to make. Backed up like they are, do they open it up a little bit more for Tony Jones, or do they still play conservative? Because eventually if you give Nebraska the ball at the 54, they're going to score. So you have to come out of here, so you may have to open it up a little bit. And the first down at 20 to work with after the holding call. And they are backed up inside their own 10. Ball is loose and covered. It appears by Oklahoma State on the bottom of the pile. Boy, could that have been a major disaster. Like Jones never quite got the handoff the man he wanted to get it to. Pat Jones' heart skipping a little bit. 
His team has not turned the football over. Here's the, it just hit the elbow. Of Jefferson. Joe Jefferson. Oklahoma State very fortunate to recover the football. Okay, David Thompson covered it. Actually for a yard gain. Second down and 19. Final play, third quarter. Not across the 10 to the 11. But a third down and a whole bunch coming up for Oklahoma State on offense when we start the fourth quarter. We played three in Stillwater, and we are where we started, dead even. Oklahoma, where Oklahoma State and Nebraska are deadlocked at 13 as we start the fourth quarter. And it's a third down and 17 for the hometown Cowboys. Play action, Jones goes down at Alberts. Trev Alberts has been hunting him all night, and he just dropped him at the two-yard line. You expect your big-time players and your star players to make big plays. Trav Alberts is not buying this play fake on third and 16. He knows it's not going to be a run to the tailback, so he just beats the block of Matt Joe's number 62. That puts Trav Alberts just one sack shy of the school record. That's 23 and a half in his career, and it backs Oklahoma State up. Scott Piner the back of his end zone again. Horn Huskers have two safeties back. Oh, the punch Bear Miles, touchdown. <laughs> Brad, he was never blocked. He beat the inside. He, he was supposed to be blocked by the end man on the line of scrimmage, but I was watching him. He just really darted inside, was never blocked. Miles, the junior, out of New Jersey. He just smothered that ball and then just covered it. Touchdown, Nebraska. And I mean, covered it and the leg of Tyner and everything else. Tyner limping Number off. 14, he's going to break to the inside here for the block, and he is not blocked by the end man. Watch him go inside. Fake outside, inside, not blocked. He's able to block the kick. Great special teams play by Miles, and the point after up and good by Bennett. Disaster strikes the Cowboys, and now the Huskers have their first lead of the night. It is brought to you by Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low rates, and by Budweiser, fresh, pure, natural. Proud to be your bud. A block punt for a touchdown is put Nebraska in front by seven with 14.09 left in the ball game. Now Tom Sealer tees it up for Nebraska. Let's see how he kicks going east. He's been booming the kickoffs tonight and has not given Raphael Denson and Shannon Culver any opportunity to return a kick. Hangs this one up a little higher into the wind. Denson from the two. Well, they don't do much better than the 20 anyway. After the 21, maybe the 22. Troy Dumas is ready to tackle. Aaron Miles is going to come from the side and take this ball right off of the foot of the kicker. He just beat the block at number 15, Trent Fisher. Great play. All by himself. That one's unassisted. <laughs> And so now for the first time tonight, the Cowboys trail. Let's see what they do on offense from their own 21 yard line. Draw play, it's open on the left side for Johnson, but Toby Wright closed it quickly. Maybe a three yard gain as we go to Jerry Punch. You think they're hustling on the football field? Let me show you what's happening here at the Nebraska bench. Glenn Abbott behind me, he is the equipment manager. He is changing the entire football team. 62 guys out of the dry turf shoe to my right here to a wet turf shoe, 130 cleats on each shoe. He is stacking shoes, trying to find corresponding numbers and shoe numbers and jersey numbers. It's chaos back here, but it's working. Pack up there. Man, that's great. It just started sprinkling five minutes ago. Gary ought to make himself <laughs> useful and healthy. That's right. Well, a catch made. Forward progress near the 30 for Shannon Culver. Short of the first down, though. 
Aaron Miles was out there, the guy who just blocked the punt. Oklahoma State in the second half, Brad's had five possessions, four started at their own 20 and one at their own 17. And their last three have been three and out and have had to punt back to Nebraska. They're going to have to do it again unless they pick up two yards here on third down. We're under 13 minutes. It's Nebraska 20, Oklahoma State 13. It doesn't appear. Mark Spatz needed two. I think he got one. It looks like another three and out situation for the Oklahoma State sideline. Uh, the fourth in a row coming up. Here comes the kicking unit. You know one thing, when you get a kick block like Scott Tyner had happened to him the last time, it's on his mind again where Baron Miles will be coming from. He's lining up in the same spot. Getting to this track stance. Oh, he got close again. Tyner got a nice kickoff. Kicks it way back at the 20. And drops at the 21. Great coverage. Getting down there was Tyler Williams to make the tackle. Nebraska with a touchdown lead in the ball when we return. This year during the winter run some very efficient yards to block a punt and almost get this one. Baron Miles again is going to come from the outside against Trent Fisher, number 15. He's closed again. He's going to work around the outside. Looks like he's held a little bit. Right under the leg of Scott Tyner. Everybody hold on. Got the leakers. Oh, he's going to throw. Let me go, baby. Let me go. Bald heads in effect. They don't belong to the hair club for me. <laughs> First down to Braxia. Jones, maybe a yard, that's all. Run defense has been still tough all night. Burns led the charge, 44 on 44. Keith Burns has really played an outstanding game tonight. 6'2", 235 pounds senior. He's a junior college player at Navarro. A lot of people thought when he came out of Navarro, he was the best linebacker in junior college. He spent some time with Calvin Jones in the preseason, part of the Playboy preseason All-American team. He said he saw more of him on the plane than he did last year when Jones ran for over 170 yards in this game. They kind of ran away from Burns and ran away from Oklahoma State in a lot. Here's Calvin again on the other side. Langford got over there. Burner from the secondary. That play just looks like it's too slow to develop and Calvin Jones is waiting too long to make his move. He's trying to wait on the block and Ken Malin, number 62, just took too long to get outside. Calvin was a player of the year in the Big 8 last year, over 1,200 yards, 71 tonight. That almost surprises you because he had to work for him. And a year ago, he told you, he had a gigantic game including a 90-yard touchdown run. Amazing thing is only seven carries. Yeah. Third and four. Play action. Frazier over to Muhammad. Incomplete. So Nebraska comes up with a punting situation for the first time in a long time. And the officials are going to have to stop play to get a couple of fans off the field. Where's Mike Curtis when you need him? The Heat have got both of those. Yep. In one sweep. Right. <laughs> Byron Bennett to <laughs> Scott Harmon is back. Well, Oklahoma State, they got 10 men up. They haven't gotten close, though. A little bit closer that time. Great punt again. Harmon goes all the way up and takes it at the 27. And he weaves his way for about nine yards up to the 36-yard line. Oklahoma State scores first in this one after the fumble recovery. It was Lawson Vaughn to put him up 3-0 in the first quarter. About seven and a half minutes later, he tacked on a 28-yard field goal. 6-0 at the end of the first quarter. And then Nebraska put together a 71-yard march. It ended in a Byron Bennett field goal from 28-6-3. Lewis Adams capped the best drive of the night, 80-yarder, to put Oklahoma State up by 10. Just at the gun at the end of the half, Bennett 
13-6 at the break. And then it was Tommy Frazier capping off the long Nebraska march with a four-yard touchdown, 13 apiece. Miles is the difference so far with a block punt for seven. And that's our difference right here. Big opening. Johnson left side. Flags down. And Johnson's down at the 47. The flag came from the far side of the field. Tyrone Williams and Lorenzo Brinkley make the tackle. Matt Jones off to look at that penalty marker that's at the 43-yard line. That's halfway to the hash mark. Doesn't like to call too much. He says, who is it? The coach isn't happy. No, he's not. And you know how you control a prep, Albert? You did not come inside the nine-yard mark. Repeat first down. No, I watched that. That was number four. But what, how do you control a defensive end when he's working up the field? He thinks it's a pass situation. Remember the last play, he was able to sack the quarterback. You run the sprint draw cutback play with Daryl Johnson. That penalty was on number four, the wide receiver, Fred Thomas. He came off the bench on that last play, and that was the penalty call. Fred Albert just put Tony Jones in his crosshairs. You're right about that. And here he comes again. Jones has to dance around him. What's the ball? Who's got it? You can bet there's a lot of pulling on that football down underneath that pile. Oklahoma State scores in the Pat's doing wind sprints. <laughs> he, he is quite an engaging personality to talk to. He's fun to spend time with. Boy, he is working that sideline. Tony Jones moving around. Ball's just tripped on him. Looks like number 62, Matt Jones may have recovered the football at 23, Daryl Johnson. Second and 17. Jones throws quickly this time, but not much of a gain for Denson, who made the catch. About three, Lorenzo Brinkley got out there, and it will be third down. Nine minutes to go. You're going to have to throw the ball down the field now. They've thrown everything in the flat, screen passes. Now Pat Jones has to take his shot to get the ball down the middle of the football field or some route a little deeper. Maybe a deep curl, deep comeback, something in the middle of the field, a dig route. You talk about struggling in the half, Mike. Only 36 yards. And only one first down after Oklahoma State in this half. To get one here, they got to pick up 14 yards. Play action flag down, Albert's nails. Jones as he threw. Flags down on the, on the play. Trev Alberts didn't get a sack, but he got a whole bunch of Tony Jones on that play. The illegal procedure against Oklahoma State. That wasn't a sack for Trev Alberts. It would have been the one to put him as a career sack leader. But watch what he does to the freshman after he makes the throw. Trev Elberts is going to put a lot of pressure, and he's going to make sure the freshman quarterback remembers number 34. I think he's definitely got his attention this half. Niner to putt again. Aaron Miles is not lined up at I think he's on the other side. The right now, side, he's on the left. They're going to try to bring him from the other side now. Oklahoma! Fifth straight, three and out for Oklahoma State. Good kick. Dixon, great punt, fields it at the nine-yard line. And he's got a little room. Corey Dixon back to the 24. 59-yard kick and a 16-yard return. Boxing special coming up tomorrow night, gang, at 7.30. Possibly boxing's most controversial fight. I didn't get a chance to see this. I can't wait till tomorrow night. Sweet Pea, Pernell Whitaker, and Julio Cesar Chavez. You make the decision when it's all over. A look back tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern, right here on ESPN.
Ford fans have had reason to cheer tonight. Regardless of what the outcome of this one might be, they've taken the number seven team in the country to the limit. 8.09 left in the ball game. Nebraska by seven. Frazier wants to cut back and keep it. Got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard. Norman Williams and Javon Langford again. Yeah, prevent much of a game. Boy, Langford has had himself a night. He's going to be a good one, Mike. They say he has the best potential of any young defensive player that they've had in a long time. They've had some great ones here. Tommy Frazier with the option, but watch Oklahoma State. They keep their shoulder pads parallel. There's just nothing there. Number 90, Norman Williams finally makes the tackle. Devon, just a freshman. Came out to the great Midwest coast. Oklahoma State over Rutgers, Pittsburgh, West Virginia, and Maryland. Almost intercepted. Charlie Verner. And Charlie knows that he's been able to somehow get his mix on that one. He was going about 30 yards for a touchdown. A long throw for Tommy Frazier across the field. Charles Verner, 35, was in perfect position to intercept that one. Last week against TCU, he had a 95-yard interception return. But Tommy Frazier with a long throw. I think he checked this off. Charles Verner, under 35, in great position for the interception. Frazier has missed his last seven. See if he puts it up on third and nine. That one's complete, but it's well short of the first down. Out to the 32-yard line. Reggie Ball. Reggie Ball. And it'll be fourth down, Nebraska. And the battle of field position continues here in the fourth quarter in Stillwater. Brad Bill Miller, the defensive coordinator, has really done an outstanding job for Oklahoma State. Great game plan. And he's got some uh, another situation going on, right? That he does. The punt coming up. Bill Miller's wife is at the game, we think. She is uh, due to have their second child. And he said, if you see me leave early, you'll know the service. <laughs> and if he's a boy, he's not going to name him Tom. <laughs> His wife knows whether it's going to be a boy or a girl, but he doesn't. We've got 6.35 left here at Lewis Field. Game, Nebraska leading Oklahoma State by seven. Fourth quarter. Boy, where are those two guys when you need them? Realize that they were on the same team the same year here at Oklahoma State. Unbelievable. Thurman Thomas, Barry Sanders. It was wow. actually a year when Thurman Thomas was an All-American running back and Barry Sanders was an All-American kick and punt returner. That spoiled you as a coach. <laughs> it sure would. Pat Jones is still looking for another one of those guys. David Thompson. Penalty marker down. They're going to get the face mask. They, 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 they got the face mask and the shield, I think. David Thompson, they're the guy they hope, the coaches, that uh, they hope he will be the kind of Thomas Sanders back we're talking about. He's just a freshman, but he shows a lot of promise. Face mask. You talk about backs. There's the face mask. Toby Wright, number three. Talking about backs, Mike, not just Thurman right, Thomas right, and right. Barry Sanders, but there's been a long list of uh, great running backs. Bob Fenimore, two-time All-American. Terry Miller, remember him? Went on to a great NFL career, too. Leslie O'Neill, a defensive tackle. Mark Moore, defensive back. Thomas and Sanders. Ernest Anderson was here. Gerald Hudson was here. They had some great players on both sides of the ball. Almost intercepted by Lorenzo Brinkley. That's the mistake you wanted all night out of the freshman quarterback, Tony Jones. But Charlie McBride was trying to get this all night. Lorenzo Brinkley just missed the interception. Number five right to him. Tony Jones rolling to the left side. He's trying to outrun Trev Alberts. Now he tries to throw the football all arm because he can't get his feet up under him. Number five, Lorenzo Brinkley just can't bring it in. Trev Alberts is like a big 6'4 shadow, isn't he, when you're a quarterback? And he makes the tackle here, but it's a first down run. The first first down since the first minute of the third quarter for Oklahoma State. You can imagine him recruiting Oklahoma State's always talking to tailbacks about do you want to be the next Thurman Thomas, Barry Sanders. And so they've been able to recruit some good backs here. And now 
with the with 609 in the ball game they need a good back now to get some yardage for them down seven stops in the freshman stays in there first down at the nebraska 48 yard line this time it's jefferson the fullback maybe a yard that's it and once again to jefferson. brinkley and Keneally make the hit. The Oklahoma State players feel very comfortable at home. They say, hey, we have a winning streak here. Seven straight, dates back to 91. You talk about a streak. They have not beaten Nebraska since 1961. 520 left. Stop on Jones. You can only imagine as you see Pat Jones on the other side what's going through his mind with 505. If he can score a touchdown, now he has to make a decision to go for one or two. And I think when you're playing Nebraska and you're Oklahoma State, you go for the two. Last loss to Kansas State in 91. Kansas State off to a great start so far this year. A big game with KU this week at right. Manhattan. Third down and eight. by John Reese, incomplete, fourth down. Now a decision, Brad, I think you punt the football, punt him in the hole, you've been doing a good job on defense, trying to kick him inside the 20, keep Nebraska down there, and you'll get the ball back one more shot to, to try to win the ball game. You got the number one rushing defense in the conference. You hope to pin Nebraska back, because they've been struggling with their passing attack of the Frazier's here in this quarter. Scott Steiner set the kick away to Corey Dixon. This time Nebraska has the return set up. So Steiner, it appears, can take a little more time and a kick. It's a fake. It is not going to be enough for a first down. It's Harmon, but he only got to the 42. Gutsy call. Didn't work. Tried to run a trap up inside with Scott Harmon. Nebraska, Charlie McBride, the snap's going to come right here, and they're going to try to run him up the middle on a trap block. And watch the blocking up inside, but there's nothing there. Too much pursuit. Number six for Nebraska, John Reese with good pursuit. And now they need all of that Oklahoma State defense to somehow get the ball back. Frazier for Jones. Jones keeps it as he fakes the end around and got to the 48-yard line. And we're down to 4.20 left in the game. Nebraska trying to defend their Big 8 conference crown, going for number three straight this year. They have had to work for it tonight. They lead by a touchdown with four minutes left. Second and four. out of bounds, but he picked up the first down, went out on his own at the 44-yard line. This Nebraska football team has had success in recent years, but when they go to the bowl games, they seem to, to lose something, but when you look at who they play, in 88, lost to Florida State, number two ranked team in the country, and number 89, number two ranked Miami, and 90, 90, number two Florida State again. In 91, they lose to number one, Georgia Tech. 92 to Miami, number one, number two, 93, <laughs> Florida State. So they've had some bad draws in the bowl game. I guess so. Blitz coming on first down. Jones, past the blitz, past the secondary. Calvin Jones, touchdown. <laughs> 22 yards. Zach Weger, number 72, with a key block. Oklahoma State tried to blitz to get the ball back. And Calvin Jones hit the seam behind Zach Weger for the touchdown. Number 44 goes 44. 
and the extra point upcoming will make it a two touchdown game with 338 left but it's for the PAC. Nebraska with that young man breaking it open. Calvin Jones is over 100 for the second time on the season. He said he couldn't wait to get out here and play tonight, even though he had the gigantic game. Last year, 176 yards and a couple of touchdowns. 31 rushing touchdowns now and 121 more on the ground tonight. So to go from the euphoric feeling of having the number seven team in the country on the ropes to feeling like that on the sideline. Pat Jones took a gamble with the fake punt. Not able to pick up the first down and the basket with good field position was able to go down and score and go up by 14. There's the blitz, number 44, Keith Burns, was picked up by Zach Wieger, number 72, and that really opened the hole for Calvin Jones, and he breaks outside and is able to get away from Delvin Miles, number seven, and outrun Charles Werner for the end zone. Sealer to kick. This one will be taken by Raphael Jensen at about the three-yard line. Picked up by Culver. He reverses field. He gets a couple of blocks. He might have something here. Out to the 26. I was looking for the Stanford band there for a second. <laughs> Kareem Moss made a tackle. Oklahoma State takes over on offense. <laughs> Hmm. Nebraska was just good pursuit down the field. Austin Wirtz made the hit that popped the ball loose. And you, you're right, Brad. If Shannon Culver just breaks one more tackle. There was the block he needed and didn't get. Kareem Moss, number one, makes the tackle. Three twenty-five. all that the Cowboys have left. And Tony Jones in trouble and goes down from behind. This one's Dwayne Harris. You worry all night about Trev Alberts, and all of a sudden, from the other side, the dam breaks a little bit. Just a reminder, we're just a couple of minutes away from naming our Wrangler player of the game. Nebraska has controlled the line of scrimmage in the second half, and that's been the difference in the ball game. Down to two downs for Oklahoma State. 2.55 on the clock. Third down at 14, and they have been unsuccessful in their last seven third down attempts. Jones has to scramble again. Completed it. Culver made the catch, but Baron Miles wouldn't let him loose. Miles has had a big second half. Baron Miles really may have been the player of the game with that block punt because that was really what set this whole game up. And now it's a key tackle to keep him getting the first down and forcing him into a fourth down situation. We've got a timeout. Fourth down and seven with 2.36 left. And it's Nebraska now in front by a couple of touchdowns. Into the ball game, three and one, and wondering just how good they might be. I think they've proven that they are a very capable Big 8 team, but things have gone Nebraska's way in the second half. Fourth down, they faked their last punt. They're showing the same type of formation here. Nobody's back for Nebraska, expecting more of the same. But they will get a punt. And now to try to get down and cover it. That's going to take a great Oklahoma State roll. This is the kind of punt they could have used before, maybe, instead of the fake punt. 64 yards, that'll work. But it's kind of late now. 
Oh, there you go. It, it pays to have family every place. Yeah, the family is definitely here tonight. <laughs> oh, that's great. Were you born here in Stillwater? No, my sister lives over in Tulsa. So she's over with a truckload. Nebraska about set to go to 5 and 0. Oh. They've been tested twice this year, though. UCLA took them to the limit, and I think you could consider this one a limit tonight. Take away that block punt. This is a whole different situation. Now to 210 with a timeout. Our Wrangler players of the game in this matchup tonight. And I think Mike and I talked about it. We just thought the difference in the ball games, this young man, not only played great in the secondary, but that block punt was huge. Our player of the game from Nebraska. And on the other side of the ball for the Cowboys of Oklahoma State. This kid's going to be something special, I think, Mike. A lot of good quarterbacks in the country this year. Tony Jones really displayed that he's going to be a fine quarterback here for Oklahoma State. So we're down to 211. And the Cowboys down to one timeout. And it looks like number 200 for Tom Osborne. And we congratulate him ahead of time. It's going to put him trailing only Joe Paterno and Bobby Bowden in the active coaching category. He will go to 20 and one against Oklahoma State. He'll have win number 200 under his belt. Second down, seven. University has an own group that sort of supports athletics here in Oklahoma State. It's called the Young Guns. They're a spirit group, and uh, they support not only basketball, but football. actually began to support Eddie Sutton's basketball program a couple of years ago. They had about six guys down here who pull a drum around the field, and about 200 up there in orange wigs. That is not Brad Nesper's family over from Tulsa. That is the folks from the Young Guns. They indoctrinated me into this uh, club prior to the game. Brad, they would have put you in, but the key word here is young. Oh, man, I knew that was coming. <laughs> Doc would take anything for free, though, because he'll take that T-shirt. He'll wear that yet tonight, probably. Scott Harmon makes the tackle. We're under two minutes. Oklahoma State can only stop it one more time. There's the congratulations to Tom Osborne, win number 200. And he will do it in less seasons, reaching the 200-win plateau quicker than anybody. Joe Paterno did it in a couple less games, but it took him one more season of course. Now to 120, second and three. Big hole for the fullback. All the way out to the 40, 4 yard line. Goes Dave Fiala, Scott Harmon may have saved another touchdown. You saw Dr. Punch down there, handsomely attired in the ESPN gear and our crew clothing provided by Logo Athletics. We thank them. Sports Center's next. Take a look at uh, the National League Championship Series. Braves uh, looking to even things off with the Phillies. Look ahead to the big college football weekend and a lot more. That's Sports Center up next. After we finish this one from Stillwater, we've got about a minute left. Talk about long streaks, though. 73, we mentioned the tie in this series, but this will now make it 31 wins, only two losses and one draw. Those two victories for Oklahoma State came in 1960 and 1961 when they first started the series. There's a dry spell continuing by quarters for Oklahoma State. Still haven't put any points up in the fourth quarter this year. And that really killed them here again today. State's going to use their last time out. We have a flag on the stop play. Penalty marker down. We're going to get a personal foul here because one of their players just punched one of the Nebraska players. But Pat Jones has to really be happy the way his players played tonight. They gave it a, they gave it a run. 
winning his Division One A, Division One coaches. The Bear on top. Amos Alonzo, Stag, Pop Warner, Joe Paterno, Woody Hayes, Bo Schembechler. You get on the list. You move into the second part of the uh, top, the dirty dozen, if you will. Bowden, Neely, Woodson, Dooley, Anderson, and now Osborne is 22 seconds away from moving into that uh, illustrious group. Of the <laughs> Lawrence Phillips <laughs> down near the 33, and that's going to do it. As Nebraska remains unbeaten, but they were challenged tonight. And challenged extremely well by the Cowboys of Oklahoma State and Pat Jones searching out Coach Osborne, who I'm sure is going to congratulate on number 200. They did play well. Let's go down to Jerry. He's all set. Jerry. Coach, congratulations. 200. Quite a milestone for you. Well, I, I wish we'd have played a little better, but we uh, actually played a good... Oh. Hey, they're celebrating down here. A little cold, but... Uh... Sure, you, you've got water in your mouth. <laughs> uh, all I can say is Oklahoma State's got a good team. They've got a great defense, and uh, we got to smooth out a little bit to get better, but we're glad to get the win, glad to get out of Stillwater. Coach, learn a little bit about your team not coming back from being down in the first half. Well, we've come back a couple times now against UCLA and against these guys, too. So I think they've got a lot of character and a lot of heart, and we've got a strong football team. So we just got to execute better. So we'll, uh, we'll get better, and I think the, the layoff may have helped, and it may have hurt us both ways. Coach, congratulations. Thanks, sir. Tom Osborne, 5 and 0 for the Cornhuskers. A little bit damp, but celebrating down here, becoming only the 11th coach, third active for 200 career victories. Guys? And you saw a guy that helped so much. Baron Miles blocked punt and 136 yards and a clinching touchdown by Calvin Jones. It's going to wrap it up. For Mike Godfrey and Jerry Bunch, I'm Brad Nessler. Thanks for being with us from Stillwater. The final score of the Huskers over the Cowboys, 27-13. Sports Center is coming up next.